And then like every single page I'll write in uh, the same color. What's the job of a movie director? It's a deep question. Um, I think we've kind of talked about it throughout this whole interview, but, but um, I mean, it's working with actors, it's shot listing the script with a DP. It's really working with all of the departments and getting the best out of everybody while moving towards an overall vision of the film and, and the story and keeping the story intact. Keeping the story you're trying to tell both visually, both both creatively and on a deeper meaning, you know, in a deeper sense, all together as one and having the actors be on board for that. Once you're hired as a director, what are you looking for with the screenplay? Like what's your process? How do you look at it? I like to look for, I like scripts that have flawed characters um, that are that are trying to achieve something great. Um, and I like f scripts that have villains that believe that they are in the right. Because I think that's interesting to have those types of conversations with actors and, and dig into that and, and get into that psychology of, of, well, why does this person believe that they're right when they're obviously the bad guy, right? So like, you know, everybody believes that they're the hero of their own story. So finding that mentality and having those conversations where you might be talking to the good guy, the guy, the actor who's playing the good guy, and you're like, you know, you're completely justified in this and that. Then you're talking to the actor that's playing the bad guy and go, look, this is how you feel because you, this guy has wronged you and blah, blah, blah. So like you getting into that psychology, that's interesting. So I think I start thinking of that, but also like if I'm reading a script and I don't start seeing the movie when I'm reading it, I don't, I, I know I'm not connecting with it. Like I have to read it and if I'm reading it and I'm like, I start seeing shots that I want to do and like going like, oh wow, this and this. Like if, I, if that's not happening, then like it just, it just means that I'm not connecting with it. Interesting. Will you give it at least another pass to see, did I miss something? No. Nah. You know. Yeah, if I'm not connecting with it there, like it just means that like, you know, it's, it's just, it's not not connecting with the material. Like I have to start seeing it and going, oh, that would be fun to like, if I find myself going, well, how would I shoot that? Like, then it means I, I wanna shoot that. Like that's what, like, but if I'm looking at that going like, well, oh, that's stupid. And like going here, like it, it doesn't, you know, it, it means I'm not connecting with it, you know? Um, which is interesting because, you know, a lot of the, the, the script's really important to me because I, I was raised by a writer and a lot of the scripts I did early on in my career, I, I wrote myself. Um, and you know, a lot of the times I do tweaks on the scripts that I'm directing that I didn't write. I'll, I'll tweak out dialogue or I'll do like a little like, you know, director's pass rewrite type stuff on my own, but I haven't really <clears throat> fully written scripts anymore myself for, since my dad passed away really. It's been much harder to will myself to, to do that because a lot of what was really fun about writing scripts was being able to talk to him about what I was writing. Um, and if I would hit like some writer's block, I'd call him and he'd talk things out with me on the phone and then I'd keep going. Uh, so it's, you know, it's definitely been hard. Plus I was writing a script with him right before he passed away and I didn't finish it and I promised him I would. And so I still haven't done that. So it feels weird thinking about other stories until that one's done. So I don't know, at some point I'll write something again. So James, you brought some cool stuff here. You have some scripts? Yeah. Yeah, so I do like color-coded notes for each department. So, uh, and then I also, here I'll show you, I'll look at the hot seat one real quick. Um, so, well, there's, I have my shot list in here as well, but then what I do, and I draw like little overhead maps of like where I want the blocking to be for each like little location. So you see like little overhead things in here with, with now we're, we're actually able to print out like what the actual overhead of the, the location is now, which is pretty cool. Um, so I don't have to draw it by hand fully, but then I'll do like this. So it'll be like actor, hair, makeup, art, props, effects, camera lighting, wardrobe. And then like every single page I'll write in a, the same color of like what my thoughts are for, for each thing. So I, it's every page of the whole script. I pre-direct all of it and kind of come up with like thoughts and, and ideas throughout all of it. And then that was the most recent one because apparently I didn't discover until, you know, the last one that I could have, um, <laughs> uh, whatchamacallit, um, a pens that were made in that color. So what I would do is just write it out and then use a highlighter to highlight it before. 
And then I would put little colored tabs on every single page. And where are the tabs? The tabs would color, would uh, correspond with the color coding. So I'd go, okay, if I see a green tab, this is when I'm in the, with effects, this is what I got to talk to them about. Go to the green tab pages. Or like if I'm like, okay, this is the yellow tab pages are for art, go to all the yellow tab pages to talk to them about that. So it's, you know, and then still see like, look, there's the evolution. Look at the little, little overhead blocking maps that I was drawing, but I was having to draw the location. Whereas over here, I was able to, ooh, print out an overhead of the location, didn't have to draw it. So thought that was pretty cool. Very cool. But yeah, it's, you know, every page is color coded with, you know, different notes for every department. And, and did you start doing this from the beginning or was it because you knew that in the moment, knowing this certain color, you could flip to it no matter how much chaos was around you? I started doing that, yeah. I, it was from a trial and error because I, I you know, so much, so often I'd be like, I'd come on to set and I'd be like, you know, I want to tell you, shit, what was I talking about? I'll be right back. And then I'd leave, right? But what I, what I started doing is like, okay, so this, and I'd like talk to them, right? So I, you know, I, I, I started, I started to write down notes for myself so that if I forgot what I was trying to say, it would be there. Uh, or if I was like, you know, uh, if I was jumbled up or you're moving fast and like, you know, cause you call cut and you're like, okay, well, I got to talk to the DP about this. I got to talk to this actor about this. Got to talk to that actor about that. I got to talk to this. So you just refer back to like, okay, well, this is what we were thinking. Great. I have my notes. It's all in a thing. Great. That's all stuff that before even being in the moment, I told myself like a week ago that I wanted to do. So I'm like, okay, cool. So that brings it back. That brings us where it is. You're shooting a lot of the time out of order too. So it reminds you, okay, this is what you felt was important about this scene. This is what was, this is the emotion you needed to get out of this scene. This is what needed to happen with art for this scene that you felt was really important, right? This is what you needed the camera to really do for this scene that would get that emotion. Great, we're all there. We're all in the same place. We understand it, so it just brings you back to what that goal was. Uh, and it's all stuff that you've gone over with the actors, with the DP, with the production designer, with the costume designer, with the you know makeup artist before making the movie. You did that in pre-production, so it's, it's just gently reminding people of the conversations you've had and, and, and looking for stuff, and, and it's just pre-planning for everything so you have an eventuality of like maybe something isn't there maybe the chalkboard isn't there so you can go okay that wasn't that important to me this was so let's move to this next piece of what this would be how many group meetings do you usually have before filming um with who like with each department each department i mean you're hopefully a lot the more the better you know um hopefully as many as possible do you do a script read with all, like a table read with all the actors or sometimes- If you're lucky read. enough to have all the actors available. Um, but mostly, you know, uh, because that's the one thing, like it'd be great to always do that because sometimes people will say something and on the day you're just adjusting words because you're like, that doesn't really make as much sense if this person's saying this. Or like, you know, this, this might on the page read normal, but like when somebody says it, you're like, that's not how people talk. And it's not the fault of the actor's performance, it's the fault of the words on the page. So you wanna change some of the words because like, you know, a perfect example is like maybe somebody saying, I am very mad at you because of this, right? And that's like their line and it's like, it seems like cheesy, but like, you know, it could easily just be changed to like, ah, fuck off. Right. Or like, oh, go fuck yourself. Or like, or like you know, leave me alone, right? Uh, but it gives you the same emotion that you needed, right? So maybe you're just like, man, they wouldn't be saying that. They'd say this in this moment, right? So then you, you're changing it. Or maybe it's just as simple as like, you know, I'm, I'm pissed at you because of yada yada. And you're just like, chop that off. <laughs> I'm pissed at you. Right. Get rid of the yada yada, you know? So sometimes it just, you know. Yeah, message taken. Yeah. yeah. It's good. So you're right, because maybe it's too formal. And it's overwritten yeah, and it's exactly. too stiff and somebody wouldn't say that. Exactly. But you, sometimes it looks normal on the page, but you need to hear people say it before you're like, oh, shit, that doesn't sound right. What do you think about directors, though, that they're so stiff with the script, they won't, there's no, you have to say the line. I can't have you deviate from it. That's not me. 
I mean, you know, I think that's, I think uh, I'm, I'm a very strong believer of like, you know, say the gist of the line. As long as like you say, like kind of what the intention of the line was, make it your own as long as it doesn't throw off what the actor across from you is doing. Um, and as long as they're aware of what you're gonna do. Mm -hmm. I, that's how I feel. However, you know, like I always say this, like I, I also, I'm a firm believer like as far as wardrobe goes, is like I might talk with the costume designer about like what I want the actor to wear, but then I like to let the actor make their decisions from there and let them do everything and what they like and what they don't like and, and stuff and shape it. And I'm very, very giving in that sense towards the actor because I feel personally that the wardrobe that the, the actor puts on is, is the first thing they do to become that character. And so I don't want to dictate, if I've talked to them about how we feel about the character and we're on the same page, I don't want to dictate to them what they what they they feel this person would be wearing for their shoes if a certain shoe is how they feel like is the emotion of what this person is or like you know the jacket that they wear usually what i say is like it's more of like a you know as long as you're not coming in in a clown costume i'm i'm usually cool with what the person wants to wear because mm -hmm. i feel like i talk more in like emotion and color palette and let them just kind of go from there